Unit 2. Why did Jesus come? What was his main purpose? Well, even as we look at this question, we kind of have to admit or realize that this is a tough question to answer. I mean, why did Jesus come to earth? There's, there's lots of answers. And so that's why this is so tough is because we are given many different parts uh, to this answer throughout the gospel accounts. I mean, if we were just to do a search for this phrase, I have come, we can see that there's a lot of results that, that come. And these are all uh, phrases directly from Jesus. Like, I've come to set a, fa- a man against his father, a daughter against his mother. I've come to seek and save that which is lost. I've come that I may preach there also. I've come for judgment. So he says all of these things, and this, is, this isn't even all of them. There's, there's a number of them. He says, I've come in my father's name. Uh, he says, I've come not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. I've come that they may have abundant life. I've come as a light in the world. I've come that I should bear witness to the truth. All of these are, sta- are answers from Jesus to this question, why, why did he come? So it's really kind of tough to summarize it all uh, into, into one answer. But I think that one of the things that we could definitely say um, is that there are some, th- these can be kind of grouped into some major areas. So why, why did Jesus come? What were some of the, the key reasons? Well, he came to identify with mankind by becoming one of us. This is so important. The one thing that God could not do, or one thing that God did not know, what it was like to be in our shoes, to be human. But because of Jesus, God took on the f- of human flesh and was now able to experience what it was like to be human, all the while maintaining his deity. Jesus also came to reveal the Father. He came to fulfill the covenants, uh, as we had talked about earlier, but he also came to usher in the new covenant. So these are, these are among, then there's more answers. This isn't even all of them. But one of the things that's consistent about all these answers is that they are part of a larger purpose. And that larger purpose we have been talking about since the beginning. And so what his main kind of goal is, if he were to try and summarize them all under one banner, it would be the same one we've talked about the whole time, which is to usher in the kingdom of God, or as we've called it, the rulership of God. But this time to do so in a whole new way than has ever been done before. And so Jesus is now going to change everything going forward. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see that he accomplishes this, this ushering in of the new covenant and of the kingdom of God is done in the three phases of his life and his ministry. So there's lots of ways to look at the life of, of Christ. It's the most significant life of all time. But one of the simplest ways, and the way we're going we're gonna to do it, is to break down his life into three significant areas. So Jesus' life and ministry, we're going to look at three, look at it in three ways. So the first is his public ministry. The second is his private ministry to the disciples. And then the third one is what we call Passion Week, which was the final week of Jesus's life. So let's start and to look at Jesus's life using this, um, this framework. And so in our next unit, uh, let's start by taking a look at the public ministry of Jesus, because it was a hugely important season of his life. So much important stuff happens, and we're not going to nearly cover it to the degree that we should, but we're going to try and overview this first phase of Jesus' public ministry. So in our next unit, um, we're going to take a look at his acceptance, miracles, crowds, and favor as we look at the public ministry of Jesus Christ.